Finally tonight, there was a time when summer TV was largely confined to reruns, but that has changed dramatically in the world of streaming video. And in fact, a new summer season is underway. Jeffrey Brown has our look. The summer season has changed so much that it's now when some of the best known shows debut new episodes. High on that list, the fantasy series Game of Thrones, which won the Emmy for Best Drama and is back on HBO. Orange is the New Black will air new episodes on Netflix. NBC returns with its surprise comedy hit, The Carmichael Show. And there are plenty of new options, such as Claws, a southern crime drama with a comic edge that comes to TNT, a show about the founding of the first women's wrestling federation called Glow on Netflix, and a Showtime drama about struggling comics in the 1970s called I'm Dying Up Here. Two TV critics, I hope they're not dying where we're talking to them from all the television. They're going to help us sort through the season. Eric Deggins of NPR and Sonia Soraya of Variety. Thanks both for joining us. I don't know how you keep up with this, but help us out here. First of all, Eric, summer season, what, does it actually mean anything? Is there any rhyme or reason anymore? Well, you know, TV is a business that loves habits, and so for the broadcasters especially, there is a summer season. Uh, I think it's less so for the cable nets, and it's even less so for the streamers like Netflix, which seem to churn out a new series just about uh, every week. But there is a sense that the TV season is slowing down a little bit, and we're seeing shows that are less than marquee shows debuting uh, during the next few months. So, uh, Sonia, let me start with you with one of the new ones coming, I mean, one of the old ones coming back, a successful one, is Aziz Ansari. He's master of none. Let's take first, let's take a quick look at a clip. Mm. Mm. This is really good. I told you. Aren't you glad you expanded your culinary horizons beyond Italian? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. We're right. What else should I try while I'm in New York? Mm. Indian food? Mm, I don't really like curry. Racist. I said I don't like curry food. I didn't say I don't like curry people. All right, I was kidding earlier, but the phrase curry people, definitely racist. I'm not racist. You can't say curry person. I'm, I'm not a curry person. I'm not defined by the flavors my people enjoy. Sonia, I, I, saw, I saw you both actually smiling, watching, or even listening to that. Sonia, tell us why you like that show. You know, Master of None is, it's such a delicate, little, beautiful show. Um, it's a half hour, but it is, you know, it's so cinematic. There's uh, actually the second season references Italian cinema a lot. You know, it's Aziz Ansari more or less playing himself, uh, you know, trying to understand his life and figure out the world. Um, and, you know, a big a big thing that motivates him, as you can sort of tell, that's, that's kind of a date that he's on in that clip. And, you know, figuring out his love life is a big part of it. But, you know, at the end of the first season, he decided he wanted to go to Italy and learn how to make pasta because that was something that he wanted to do in his life. Um, the second season is about him broadening his horizons even more. Yeah. Uh, it's, some, it's like a lovely little vacation, that show. Eric, I'm going to have you tell us about House of Cards because, indeed, Kevin Spacey and Robin Wright are back as Frank and Claire Underwood. Let's took, look at a little clip of that. Why did you ask him to leave? Because I just wanted to look in your eyes one more time before we do this. Francis, we're doing this. He can't save us. He invented term limits. There, Eric, they're still doing it. They're still plotting. <laughs> it goes on and on. Are. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I know some people <clears throat> have grown tired of House of Cards, and I think if you're, if you're one of those people, you're not going to necessarily like the new season. But the new season uh, does have a lot of the political machinations that I think uh, are sort of the heart of the show's appeal. And it also uh, really deals with the tension and the partnership between these two very singular characters, Frank Underwood by Kevin Spacey and Claire Underwood, uh, played by Robin Wright. Well, let's look ahead at some new programs uh, that you're, in, you're looking forward to. Sonia, start us off. Start us off. What are a couple of things you, you really want to let us know about? 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's this crazy little show called Claws on TNT that's uh, debuting next week, I think. Uh, and it stars Niecy Nash as a manicurist who kind of also dabbles in some mob activity. Um, and it takes place in Manatee County in Florida. And just everything about it is so different, for, so different from most other stuff you'd find on TV. Uh, the nails are amazing. Obviously, the fashion, the style is just so much fun. And, you know, you get to see these, uh, these women who are painting nails, also launder money, and uh, maybe commit a few murders here and there. There's something a little bit silly and a little bit fun about it, too, but it also really takes a look at some of the real issues that affect people in places that don't often make it to your TV screen. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that goes, too. Well, you mentioned at the start of this segment uh, Glow, the mm -hmm. Netflix series about the, glor <laughs> well, the, the uh, gorgeous ladies of wrestling, is what I think. Uh, uh, it, it's about the start of a female um, wrestling league. And uh, it, it's really the start about uh, these sort of lovable losers and their attempts uh, to sort of find themselves while they build this very fledgling operation, which is a female-centered wrestling league uh, in the mid-80s. And it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a show that kind of sneaks up on you. And, um, you know, Mark Maron is great as the um, sort of uh, B-movie director who decides uh, to try and, 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 uh, and find another career by starting this uh, wrestling league. And I would compare it a little more favorably to another show that you mentioned called I'm Dying Up Here, uh, a Showtime series about uh, young comics uh, working out of a uh, legendary, uh, you know, a comic nightclub in Los Angeles. It's fictionalized, but it also has real people in it. It's based on a book that's actually about very real comics like uh, David Letterman and mm -hmm. Jay Leno and how they started in Los Angeles. And because the show has a hard time walking that line between fictional characters that it takes liberties with and real characters like Johnny Carson and Richard Pryor also show up, I think the show isn't quite as impactful as it could be, but it's also a show about lovable losers trying to find themselves and, and make it in an industry that's really very difficult, which is uh, yeah. Hollywood in, in, the in the late 1970s, early 80s. All right, one bonus, real quick for me, if you would. Some show that you love but you don't think has gotten enough attention. Eric? It's not in new episodes uh, yet. It will come back. It's a show called Throwing Shade on TV Land. It's a late night talk show uh, with a feminist and a gay man talking about the day's news. Uh, two uh, points of view that are woefully underrepresented in the late night scheme. I thought it was brilliant when it was on, and uh, it should come back to new episodes relatively soon. Okay, Sonia? Uh, I'm going to go with The Carmichael Show. Uh, it's an NBC sitcom. It's coming into its third season. Uh, it's Would this little it? show that has been oh, running on the summer, oh, and I feel like every season yeah. it comes up with even more the topics and even more humor than that to, to tackle in this, like, fascinating way that I, I just think everyone should be watching this show. Sonia Soraya of Variety, Eric Deggins of NPR. Thank you both very much.